Welcome back to Everything EOS, the longest running EOS podcast. I am here today with the Shintai team, Philip Hamnett, the CTO of Shintai and core developer, Michael Nash. What is up, fellas? Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, first off, uh, we're going to be talking about Shintai today, but you guys are also, at least both of you, are part of the EOS 42 block through. So I just want to congratulate both of you on the block one votes that you got earlier this month. Uh, that, that's super big. Uh, kind Thank of a uh, stamp of approval that all of the block producers have been getting. I'm excited to see uh, them participating in governance. Um, yeah, congratulations to you guys too. Um, Liquid apps for getting the spotlight we've built on Yoso. It's like a long time coming, right? Yeah, that was really cool. Um, it, it's nice to kind of be recognized in that way. Uh, it's been a long time coming. It's something I, I wish would have happened a year ago, but I think now mm -hmm. is good timing. When, when are they gonna feature you guys though? You guys are like one of the top projects on EOS. I mean. There's like a couple tiers of projects. And I'd consider Liquid Apps, Chex, uh, Equilibrium, Bigger, a few other projects at the, that top tier. And uh, I haven't seen them feature any of you guys. You guys are like the top DeFi. What's up? Yeah. With that? <laughs> That's a question for Block One, I would say. <laughs> Block One, if you're watching, uh, you can find <laughs> these guys' contact information in the description below. I think uh, this is a project worth featuring. But uh, as far as today's episode, we're going to feature a lot of cool topics. We got the DAP token leasing market on Shintai. You got a new checks leasing market coming out. We're gonna talk about Charm. We're gonna talk about Wax. We're gonna talk about the Monetary Authority of Singapore, an upcoming conference you guys are speaking at and sponsoring. Uh, so let's just kind of get into this. Um, I, I think everyone knows what Shintai is, but why don't we give a little TLDR on what exactly Shintai is, and then we'll get into the planned topics for today. So um, Shintai has been around now for uh, over two two years, basically since the launch of, um, of the EOS mainnet. And originally we started off as a leasing market for the EOS token. So we allowed people who had lots of EOS but didn't use the EOS blockchain to make passive income by leasing their tokens to people who use the blockchain but couldn't afford to buy lots of EOS tokens to stake to access the network. And that's how we started off um, all that time ago back in 2018. And um, since then we've uh, slowly evolved into a, a full DeFi company uh, now we have leasing of uh, free tokens, the Boyd market. Uh, if you guys know the Boyd uh, project on EOS and then obviously the EOS token still and now the DAP market. Um, and we're also planning to expand into several other areas in finance, such as decentralized bonds. And we have various other little uh, side projects that we've done as well, um, which we'll talk about later, I guess. You guys were basically the Rex before the Rex. And then right. I, I think whenever the Rex launched, is that kind of whenever things had to pivot a little bit and expand your offerings? Exactly. Um, before the Rex launch, we were the only way that you could um, lease EOS tokens. And I remember at one point we had something insane. We had like, uh, was it eight, was it 20 million EOS in our smart contracts being I'm exchanged back and forth? It's like it was almost insane. 100 million dollars. Um, Way before in, the IDOS stuff, it was the casinos yeah, yeah. that were causing the congestion. Exactly. Like in 2018, I remember that. Shintai, you, you basically saved the network at that time. So right. de definitely. But, but yeah, when, when the Rex came out, we had to um, adapt because obviously most of the liquidity moved over to the Rex. Um, and we had to think about how we wanted to make progress from there. And so... That's where we started the idea of leasing everything. We launched our checks token and, um, and have been trying to form a regulated uh, securities exchange environment right now. I'm excited to talk about that. That's a little bit later in the list. Let's just get into the topics. The one that has me the most excited because it kind of touches me personally is the DAP leasing market. Um, what exactly is it? Uh, what can you do with it? And then we'll kind of get into the nuts and bolts of what, what it took to get us there. Yeah, great. So as Phil uh, said, Shintai is all about uh, leasing everything. So people who are familiar with Shintai will know that uh, in the past we've leased EOS, as you just mentioned, uh, you know, millions of dollars of uh, worth of EOS are being leased through our system. Um, and in the past, we've essentially used a, a kind of like a classic order book system where, you know, if you're a lender or a borrower, you can just go on the order, bo order book and just say, I want to borrow or lend this amount and add this interest rate. And then, you know, if, if, uh, if the interest rates overlap with books, with orders on the book already, then, um, then the orders get matched and the, the transaction is executed. Uh, what we've developed here is something that's a little bit different than that. And it's, it's what we're calling a pooling style market. 
uh, where instead of individual users lending and borrowing from or to each other, instead it's all kind of done through this pool. So lenders will lend to the pool and borrowers will borrow from the pool. Uh, it works uh, similar to the Rex. Uh, people familiar with the, e the uh, ERC ecosystem will be familiar with that. So um, in a lot of ways, uh, the DAP uh, pooling market right now is uh, is similar to the Rex. It's different in some ways, but if you understand Rex, you'll have like a, a big head start mm -hmm. on understanding how the system works. So the big advantage here, uh, we can go back to the real estate analogy. It's the difference between owning real estate and renting real estate um, and just like the upfront cost. So with liquid apps and the DAP network, if you want to, um, there's a whole decentralized group of service providers that you might need to stake to, to uh, get services like Oracle's or VRAM or IPFS storage. And for each one of those, there, there's different fees. So if I wanted to stake to like Blockstar to EOS Nation, I might need a million DAP tokens for just a single service. And if I need multiple services for multiple DSPs, we're talking millions of tokens. I, I don't know what the current price of it is that uh, of that would be, but it, it's in the tens of thousands of dollars, I'm sure, which a lot of startups especially aren't going to have. But because of technology and tools like the Shintai leasing market, it becomes easily attainable for, I, I don't know what the price would be per month, but a couple hundred dollars maybe to be able to rent tens of thousands of dollars of, of tokens. So that, that's more reasonable for most startups and most companies. Um, and then the other advantage is it, it shields uh, these projects from the volatility of a token, whether it be the DAP token or in, we'll get into the Chex marketplace too, the Chex token. So those, those are the two huge advantages. Is there, is there anything I'm leaving out here? Uh, no, that's it, yeah. Um, uh, aside from you know lenders earning passive income on the, the DAP tokens that they're holding, obviously passive income always a, an attractive proposition for everybody, yeah. Why don't, why don't we talk about that a little bit? You want to kind of go into detail of what, the, what, what, what are the advantages for the lenders on that side of the market? Yeah, sure. So um, I think it makes sense to talk a little bit about how the DAP market actually works, uh, and then we can explain why uh, we think Shintai is the best service to use uh, for uh, people wanting to earn passive income on their DAP. So right now, um, yeah, as I said, it works similar to Rex. So uh, if you have DAP tokens and you're looking to lend them out to people, uh, you can lend them to our pool. And in return, you'll receive something that we're calling the Shintai DAP token. Uh, because of naming restrictions on the blockchain, we, we have to call that the C DAP token. Uh, so there's this token now that's called C DAP. And uh, that will be deposited into your Shintai wallet in exchange for you uh, depositing the DAP into the pool. And uh, the CDAP essentially represents a portion of the pool that is entitled to you. So if you own 1% of all of the CDAP in existence, that means that you own uh, or, or at least are entitled to 1% of the pool at any one time. And because the, uh, the liquidity in the pool is increasing, uh, that means that you, the amount of DAP that you are entitled to is increasing. Uh, so there are two different ways that the liquidity of the pool will increase, and that's the first is through staking rewards. When you deposit your DAP into the pool, uh, the DAP will immediately be staked to the Shintai uh, DevOps staking service, and we're offering uh, rewards based on that uh, at the current market rate, which I think is 80%. Uh, and uh, those tokens will be deposited into the pool, which will then raise the price of the CDAP, which will mean that you'll get more uh, back when you, um, when you withdraw your DAP. And the second way is uh, through borrow orders. So when people make the borrow order, they'll pay a portion of, um, of that in interest, which then gets transferred to the pool. And that likewise will also increase the... Uh, the value of, of the CDAP, and over time, uh, you'll see returns. We, we don't want to give any hard numbers for returns yet, because uh, especially since the um, the market's still quite uh, quite young. Mm -hmm. But um, but we anticipate it being quite valuable because you'll you'll earn twice uh, as a lender. You'll earn once for the rewards and once for the for the interest from the borrow orders. So basically, I think the 80% is similar to what other uh, staking packages like Blocks offer. So with you guys, you're matching what someone like Blocks is offering, plus additionally giving 
the lender is a portion of, of the, the business attracted from the rental market. So the more renters there are, the more people using the DAP token for its utility of renting services from DSPs like Oracles or VRAM, the more passive income that the lenders are actually going to receive in return. And then that in turn would raise the APR, which ideally would bring in more liquidity to keep the cycle going and healthy until it finds yeah. a good market rate and kind of stabilizes there. Exactly. I would also yeah. anticipate um, that over time, like as, as the DAP network gets more and more usage and more and more people using VRAM and the other services that Liquid Apps provides, uh, I would anticipate um, more and more borrowers needing to use our service and therefore even uh, higher returns, so to speak, from for the, for the lenders in that regard. Mm -hmm. And then from the lenders themselves, you kind of get this network effect of this whole community of people that are basically telling projects, hey, you guys should lease from Shintai because it's going to increase kind of their, right. their returns also. That, that's really exciting. I think it really strengthens uh, the DAP network. I think it, it brings a, a new audience. We have a lot of crossover between our communities, but it, it might attract some new people to you guys too. And it's just an amazing added utility to the DAP token that wasn't there before. Uh, token leasing was something that was mentioned in the white paper and it's amazing to see it come out of the community. But speaking of adding new token utilities, uh, I think we should talk about uh, the, the checks token a little bit. You guys, with this pooling leasing market technology, you guys uh, kind of built uh, and launched with the, the, the DAP token leasing, you guys are using something similar. Would you call it similar right. for, for the checks token market? And this is something that has not been written about yet. This is the first people are going to hear about this new utility for the checks token with the checks leasing market. You guys want to introduce what this is? Sure. So um, we will be launching, well, this is pending legal review. Okay. So um, our lawyers are looking into the legalities of this and, uh, and we're just waiting on final confirmation, but Pending legal review, we will be launching, hopefully by the end of July, a checks leasing market that will work similar to the DAP leasing market in that you will lend your checks tokens to the pool. Someone can borrow checks tokens um, to stake them. And the purpose of this is for the merchant scheme or our white labeling solution. So uh, the, the utility of checks in this regard, because there are many utilities for the checks token going forward. But in this case, it's... Um, if you want to access our order books, access our liquidity pool, uh, if you want to make an exchange that is in every sense yours, except the smart matching, the smart contract, that's all controlled by our smart contract. You can do this and have your own fees and make your own interest and all of this. But to do so, you need to stake some checks tokens. Um, and those are the borrowers we anticipate who will want to... Um, be on the borrower side of this lending pool. And um, in addition to the interest that those borrowers would be willing to pay, there will also be um, some additional rewards going into there from fees collected from other markets and other um, products and services that Shintai offers right now. For, for example, um, one, one of the companies that we're working with right now is called Cinderblocks. They're a real estate tokenization company. Mm -hmm. and they want to do fractionalized real estate on, on chain. And if they wanted to um, issue real estate tokens and then be able to uh, trade them on their own website, they could do that. But they don't want to go to the effort of, of having to write an exchange. Um, and then that has to be on chain. And it's, it's just too difficult and too much time and effort for most people to be interested in doing that. So instead... Uh, they can simply plug their market into our exchange and launch it. And they will have access to all of the products and features and services that are currently available on our exchange. And to do that, they will need to stick some checks tokens. Right. So, and they will so, be the ones who would potentially borrow. So just like with the DAP leasing market, you, you onboarded this, this company called Cinderblocks. And mm. just like any other project, they have two choices. They could buy a whole lot of checks tokens to get these white label services or uh, because I, I don't know if they're a startup or not, but they're, they're testing new grounds here. Maybe they, they want to feel it out before they make a big investment to actually buy the real estate. They want to rent that first. So they could actually onboard themselves for a much lower rate. And then um, those rental fees would go to checks token holders, essentially. Right. For example. Yeah. And this is just an example 
um, because we like, I, I'm not talking on behalf of Cinderblocks. They, they haven't <laughs> said that they're launching an exchange, but it's a, yeah. a typical kind of example that would make sense. Um, That's interesting. Um, we'll, we'll get into some of the regulation stuff because I'm assuming that we're talking tokenized securities if we're talking real estate. But uh, before yep. we get to the regulatory stuff, I do want to talk about Wax because you guys are doing some stuff there. And Wax is the hottest EOSIO chain right now. I, I think that's pretty safe to say. So it's really mm -hmm. cool that you guys are doing a lot there. You guys are also a block producer there, number 15 last I checked when I was doing my notes as EOS 42. So right. what are you guys doing on Wax? So we're also going to take this pooling market that we made for DAP and we're going to be launching that on Wax for the Wax token itself. So anybody who wants to um, lend their WAX tokens can lend it there. Anyone who needs WAX tokens for bandwidth will be able to borrow them there. And that will be launching soon. We'll also be launching um, Charm on the WAX network. And I'll explain in briefly what Charm is. Um, so you know how on, on the EOSIO chains you need to stake uh, EOS or WAX for CPU and net bandwidth mm -hmm. and, and RAM, right? Um, mm -hmm. So the, the charm is a way to automate that process so you don't have to think about it. The idea is you um, deposit some funds into a smart contract and you say, don't let me fall below um, 50 milliseconds of CPU time, for example. I've got to have at least that much CPU time. And if you do fall below that, then uh, the charm will automatically uh, rent tokens for you and stake them to your account for a fixed amount of time. And that's uh, something else we'll also be launching on the, on the WAX network, um, hopefully in the next month or so. Awesome. Uh, and WAX, uh, for those not familiar, WAX does not have Rex. So it's not like EOS main that where they have their own Rex marketplace. Um, but a, a good example of the, util or the utility for Charm on, on EOS main that is, um, I, I got into this habit before I started using the Charm of like every 30 days I would renew my, my CPU with the Rex, I'd just buy like 0.01 EOS every month. And then every 30 days, I, I'd always forget about it. And then I'd go to do a transaction, it, it gets stuck. And I'm like, oh, crap, I got to go back to blocks and rent more, more, more Rex again. So what Charm does, it kind of just automates that. So I'm never over renting either. Because uh, before that, uh, or before I started renting just 0 0.01 from Rex, I was renting like half an EOS at a time just to be safe. I'd have thousands of EOS staked and I knew I didn't need them, but I'd stake them anyway because I'm like, ah, screw it. It's only half an EOS and I don't want to run out. So what Charm does is you're only spending what you're using and then when, when, only whenever it goes below that threshold, it kind of renews your CPU. And also that. it's dynamic. That's another thing to point out. So like right now, the network is in a healthy state, mm -hmm. but if there was another huge congestion uh, event like when EIDOS launched and suddenly the cost of CPU skyrocketed, right? Mm -hmm. um, Charm can deal with that automatically. So the moment that CPU becomes really expensive and, and you go to like, if, if you've seen that on blocks before where you log on and it says like you've got 5,000% used for your uh, CPU. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> like if that happens, then Charm will buy enough CPU to get you back into the green um, or into the black, no matter what as long as you've got money in your account. That's exciting. So we got the DAP leasing market uh, just launched in June a few weeks ago. We've got the checks leasing market, pending legal, uh, launching potentially in July. We've got checks coming to wax with charm and another uh, leasing market. Uh, is there anything else you guys are working on that we may have missed here? Uh, we're looking uh, to add a couple of features to the DAP market uh, soon. So. At the moment, the uh, the only period, uh, the, the only leasing period is uh, is 30 days. So if you're a borrower and you're borrowing DAP, you you borrow for 30 days and that's fixed. Uh, what we're looking to do is introduce a kind of a variable market rate, so uh, users could lend or sorry, users could borrow from anywhere from one to 90 days, and you know the amount that you pay would be proportional to the uh, the period that you're borrowing, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we see that as being quite uh, quite valuable for the community because we, we don't really want to just railroad people into saying, you know, you have to borrow for 30 days. We, we think, you know, allowing users to make choices like that that, that uh, will be very useful for them in the long run. And uh, the, the second feature we're looking to add in the future is uh, an auto-renew system for borrow orders. So uh, it's I guess it's similar to the charm, actually, in, in, in the sense that uh, if it's just kind of automated for you. If, if you're a borrower and you're 
you know, you want to borrow some VRAM from this package and you want to do it every 30 days or whatever, whatever it is, uh, well, you can just uh, click the box and say, you know, when this borrow order is finished, you'll just auto renew it at the, uh, at the current market rate. And you'll also be able to say, uh, I don't want to pay over this amount for that, uh, that borrow order as well. So those two features we're looking to add to the DAP market uh, soon. Those are, those are some exciting features. I've actually seen uh, some people asking about that before. So it's cool that you're already on top of it. Uh, I'm not sure if it was because of community feedback or you just were just thinking ahead like that. So the other exciting thing I wanted to talk about today is something that uh, I, I don't get to talk about enough because I'm just not in this area and that's regulation and compliance. You guys are at the forefront of that. You guys are doing a whole lot of stuff in Singapore though. Dude, what is it about Singapore and DeFi that, that has attracted you guys there? What are you guys exactly doing there? So um, Singapore is a very friendly regulatory environment. Um, one of the biggest issues right now with market penetration in, in tokenized securities is that regulatory frameworks around the world just aren't mature enough to deal with like distributed ledger technology. To this end, like Singapore recently passed a bill um, called like the Payments and Services Act. And this is like a major step forwards in terms of DeFi products for securities. Um, that's one of the main reasons why we're moving to Singapore for uh, the uh, regulated finance. You guys are in the process of getting some sort of license. What's, what's that about? So yeah, we're applying for a license right now, which is um, allowing, going to allow us to do token security issuance and um, any financial products that service uh, the assets that we're going to be issuing. So essentially that'll mean that uh, securitized, securitized tokens and utility tokens will be tradable and leasable, um, including some custodial privileges stuff uh, are covered by this license as well. And that will all be possible through our exchange going forward. Well, that license is in the process of being uh, obtained right now. It's exciting. Yeah. So what, what's like an example use case of something that would be possible to do completely legally uh, once, once you have this license? So uh, one example, which is like the most commonly used one is like real estate. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine uh, someone comes along, they want to tokenize real, est uh, real estate, maybe say uh, a, a large uh, apartment block or something. Mm -hmm. And it's costing millions of dollars to buy the whole block. And this will allow people with uh, small amounts of money who would usually be cut out from such uh, a portfolio, they wouldn't be able to invest in real estate because they don't have the money necessary to do it, but they could invest a thousand dollars in real estate in a location and get a fractionalized token from that. And that token would be able, we could issue that token on behalf of these um, real estate companies that want to do fractionalized uh, token distributions. We would then also be able to set up a secondary exchange for that so that you could trade that token against them. Um, uh, fiat currencies, there'll be fiat on-off ramps and or other cryptocurrencies. Uh, all of this will be possible um, going forwards once we've got this license. Yeah, that's awesome. So, uh, where's the article? Encoded. You guys put out a blog article maybe like a month ago about encoded compliance. How this not so sexy aspect of tokenized security will change the future of finance. With all of this stuff, you're basically maintaining a paper trail of all of the transactions on a blockchain. Is that essentially what, what's going on here and what yeah. the secret sauce is? Yeah, it's par partially this, but also, also I would say the um, automated compliance is quite important too. So the, the way this is going to approximately work is as follows. When, if you want to use this um, security tokens exchange, you'll have to register and do KYC AML, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but once you've done that, the, the details will be partially stored on chain, not, not the details of like where you live and, and what your real name is and so on. Like that mm -hmm. won't be on chain directly, but that you have passed the KYC will be on chain. Right. So just like a flag, like pass KYC. Flag, for example, yes. yeah, I'm, I'm simplifying a bit, but yes, mm -hmm. like that. So for example, like let's, let's just make an example up where there are two token security tokens. One where anybody is allowed to trade it and another where only accredited investors are allowed to trade it. Right? And mm -hmm. we have in our a compliance contract, something that says uh, that this person has accredited investor status and, and this person doesn't, this other person doesn't. So mm -hmm. if you go to our website and log in, then the accredited investor will see both of those markets 
the one for accredited investors and the one not for accredited investors. Mm. Whereas the non-accredited investor won't even realize that the accredited investor market exists, as an example. And so he will inherently not be able to break the law because the option simply won't be available to him. It won't be visible on the website and the smart contracts won't allow any non-compliant thing to occur. The other non-sexy aspects include things like reporting. So um, taxes, getting tax sheets printed out automatically, um, whatever else is required in order to mm -hmm. guarantee that you are legal and compliant and following all the rules and laws. You say it's not sexy, but for the companies that have to maintain all that paperwork, this is very sexy. Do you, <laughs> I, I, I can only imagine the accounting and manpower that goes into actually being compliant as a, a business in these industries. So I, I think for them, it, it could really save them a lot of time and money. So it, I think it is sexy to them. Yeah, for, the intention is that for those kind of, those companies, they have to push a button and their auditing is done. When auditors come to them and say, prove to me that, uh, that, there's, that there's no uh, money laundering or whatever, that they just go, oh, no money laundering. They push the money laundering button and it prints out a report which proves that there's no money laundering, right? And that's all that's backed amazing. on chain that you can see everything, every aspect of it, completely auditable. Now, b before we get questions in the comments or in the live chat, uh, this does not mean that the whole Shintai platform is going to require K KYC ML. No. It, it's just going to be for certain specific securities in the future. Okay. That's right. J just clear out yeah. that misconception there just before it even hits. Yeah. If you don't um, do KYC AML, you'll only have access to those things that don't require KYC AML. Okay, so all the leasing markets and everything, those should exactly. remain open and unless something yep. major changes with regulation for any reason. Um, so let's continue talking about Singapore. You guys, uh, in a couple of weeks, have a big event you're participating in, the Singapore Blockchain Week, which will be virtual this year uh, because of uh, travel restrictions, coronavirus. It's going from uh, July 21st through the 24th. There's a bunch of big speakers there. I see Hester Purse is there. Uh, I can't even say this guy's name. He's the chief financial officer of the Monitor Monetary Authority of Singapore, who is uh, one of the organizations you guys are working with. There's some coding boot camps, payment services workshops. Uh, it's at blockchainweek.com.sg. The link's in the description, but uh, I'll let you guys take it from here. What is this conference and what you what what is your role at the conference? So the conference is generally about compliance-enabled uh, blockchain. Uh, it's being done, produced on behalf of the Monetary Authority of Singapore and the Singapore Blockchain Association. Um, so yeah, they've, they basically, those two have teamed up to bring the top minds from APAC, that's Asia Pacific, to uh, for a panel about uh, compliance-enabled uh, decentralized finance, tokenized securities, and stable coins. Um, our legal counsel and partner is going to be there, Tom Bicknell. He's from Pinsent Masons. Um, he'll be a keynote speaker at the conference, and his topic will be about the overlap between regulatory compliance and how Shintai sees an avenue for market penetration in Asian, in Asian markets. We'll have a virtual booth at the event um, for people to connect with us and get to know the project. Uh, when we get a link for that, we'll uh, share that. So let, let's get back to that license we were talking about earlier. I, I, I forget what it's called, I'm sorry, but um, you mentioned you're applying for it. Where are you in the application process? And then w once it's a, a approved, like what kind of advantages are, is your team going to have over other teams? So we're almost uh, through the application process. Uh, there, there is still a few legal loopholes to jump through and I'm not privy on all the details of the, of the legal side of things right now. But in terms of the advantages, um, we're particularly well suited with EOS IO technology in particular uh, because it's high performance and we can do everything on chain because it's also high performance and has no fees, right? So uh, other platforms are particularly struggling right now with like slow uh, systems and high fee protocols or like, you know, they've got to pay gas if it's on Ethereum or whatever. And therefore they also have to put their logic off chain and in doing this, they lose a lot of the benefits of having blockchain technology in the first place, right? And if, in this sense, there are companies like Polymath, for example, is one of our competitors who is uh, also doing security token issuance. And they, they applied for a license from the Monetary Authority of Singapore. And um, they were turned down because of the protocol that they're using. 
So if they can't maintain compliance, and as far as I understand it, they can't maintain compliance and therefore are not capable of getting this license. So this is one of the major advantages of EOSAO technology. And um, I think we're really well placed right now because everything we do is on chain mm -hmm. and it's high performance. And uh, yeah, that's it. Is there, is there anything we left out? I mean, we talked about a lot of exciting things. We broke some news that uh, hasn't even been blogged about by you guys yet. Is there anything we missed today that you guys want to share with uh, our community here with everything EOS? No. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I think we covered everything. Yeah, All we right, tend, so to, tend to, uh, like, if we, if we have news, we just say it. Like, on, on the day we have it, we say it. We don't, we don't hold news back and, and like build hype and, and stuff. And we tend to not tell anyone things until we've actually done it. It's quite rare for us to say we're yeah. releasing something next month. Exactly. Um, so we, we're working on a lot of stuff right now, but uh, we only yeah. announce stuff when we actually <laughs> release it. Well, yeah, there, exactly. there's, there's a lot of things people could do to interact with you guys. They could join your community on Telegram. They could use the, the charm on uh, right now on EOS, soon on Wax. They could rent DAP tokens. They could rent checks. No, not quite yet. They can't rent check. Blech. They can rent DAP tokens. They can rent Boyd tokens. Uh, are those the EOS tokens? We also technically have an EOS market, but uh, no one uses it because of the Rex. But if the Rex <laughs> ever goes down, like ours is there as like a backup, like it's a redundant system for the case that Rex has a problem. All right, I guess we could wrap up there. If there's nothing left to talk about, there's some exciting things happening on Shintai. You can keep up with them at Shintai.io. All of the links we've talked about today are in the description. Thank you, Nash. Thank you, Philip. I hope to have you guys on again sometime in the future whenever there's uh, exciting things going on again, which it's kind of seems like it's a constant thing here. Uh, so until next time, I guess we could finish this with a uh, Go Eos, right? Go Eos! Go Eos! Go Eos.